Okay, so today we're going to look at deriving a third equation for constant acceleration. Okay, so the two equations that we have so far, one of them is this one, 1 half at squared plus vit. Now we derived this in, a, uh, in the last lesson. And the other equation that we have is v final equals at plus vi. How can we use these two equations to get a third one? S many times textbooks or even uh, professors or teachers may just write down the third one and say, there it is. But we're not going to do that. We're going to try and derive it. And the way I'm going to try and derive it is I have a little bit of insight. And my insight is that the third e acceleration equation does not have any time variable in it. So in order to achieve this, we're going to so take this equation here, and we're going to rearrange it for solving for time. So if I say time equals, I'm going to take the vi, take it to the other side. I'm going to get vf minus vi. And then I'm going to divide both sides by a. And so now I have an equation for time in terms of the other variables. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to substitute it into the first equation, such that if I rewrite the first equation again, I get 1 half a. Now instead of writing t squared, I'll write v final minus v initial divided by a, all squared, plus vi, now I multiply by t again, vf minus vi over a. And so if I now try to simplify this equation, I'm going to need a little bit of algebra math help here. And if you remember, a minus b squared is equal to a squared minus 2ab. Uh, let me just move that down a bit there. Uh, plus b squared. So that is like a something you learn. I think it's called FOIL. But most students that have taken uh, grade 9 or 10 math uh, will remember that. So now I'm going to utilize that equation here. And what I'll do is I'll say delta D equals 1 half A. And now I'm going to expand the, the numerator because it's Essentially, it's, uh, you know, if I write it one last time, okay, and then here on the top, I'll, I'll have uh, VIVF, uh, oops, no, not plus, minus VI squared, and then all this is divided by a. Now I can rewrite it again, but this time I'm going to have, actually that a disappears. So this a, if I use a different color, this a cancels with that square. So if I write it again, I'll have uh, vf squared minus 2 vf vi plus vi squared. All that is divided by a. And then I have my plus vi vf minus vi squared all over a. Now what I'm going to do is I can recognize now that 
I can multiply this entire equation by a, and not only am I going to multiply it by a, so I'll say I want to multiply by 2a. If I multiply by 2a, this one half disappears, and both of these a's disappear. So I'll I have to multiply the whole equation by 2a. So I get 2a delta d is equal to, now the 2 cancels with the 1 half, so the 1 half disappears, and the a disappears as well. v final squared minus 2v final v initial plus v initial squared. Now, this term here, I have to multiply by 2a. The a's cancel out, but I still have to multiply by 2. So I get 2vi vf minus 2vi squared. Now I'll change colors again. And if you'll notice, I have minus 2i here, minus, sorry, minus 2vf vi, and I have positive 2vf vi here. So these two guys cancel out. The, remember, multiplication order doesn't matter. These are the same terms. V final times V initial. This is a plus, this is a plus two, this is a minus two. So they cancel. The other thing which I notice is that my VI squareds, this is a, this one is plus one and this is negative two. So one minus two is equal to negative one. Therefore, let's change colors back. I'm going to get two a delta d equals v final squared. Now, I can say both these two terms result in minus v i squared. Notice the terms in the red boxes cancel each other out and the circled terms result in minus vi squared because we 1 minus 2. So now that we have this equation, it looks much simpler, but we can actually uh, want to change it one last time. And I will. what I'll do is I'll just move this term to the other side of the equal sign. And I'll solve for vf squared is equal to 2a delta d plus vi squared. Another way of writing this, which is probably my preferred way of writing this, is like this. Which is exactly the same because addition is commutative. It doesn't matter which order you add things. And so here is my last kinematics equation, v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta d. Notice that there is no time variable in this equation. Therefore, what are our three equations now? Let's write all of them down. Ready? The other ones are delta d equals 1 half a t squared plus v i t. And of course, I can expand delta d into uh, v final, uh, sorry, d final minus d initial, but I'll just leave it like this for now. And then the other one was this one, which is kind of like the definition of acceleration. So we've got three equations. And there they are. And all of these are for constant acceleration. Now, remember that we also wanted to write, we had one equation for constant velocity. And that one equation for constant velocity was V equals delta D over T. This equation is for constant velocity. So that's it. Those are our kinematics equations, and those are the only equations that you'll need.